Hi, my name is Julieta Colas. I've been participating at Idiotune for a couple of years now. And I'm here to interview Spencer Rodwell, head of writers at Clarence for Cartoon Network. Hi. Hi, thank you. How's it going? <laughs> going pretty good. It's been great uh, participating here. Just did my little talk and that was really fun. And it's wonderful being here in Cuernavaca. What do you think about all the pitches and Bibles that people have come and shown you? Like, what do you think about the Mexican talent? It's great, yeah, there's a lot of really awesome talent here. Uh, it's really cool to see the diverse styles of people's pitches. Everything is really professional. Uh, some of the pitches are really great, and I could definitely see them being made. And. I hope to see some of them yeah. be made as well. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be great. Um, so speaking about, you know, TV and stuff, I, I've been wondering, uh, so like, what were your favorite shows growing up, whether if it, those were animated or live action? Do you have any? Yeah, um, I always really liked, when I was a younger kid, I guess like I would watch Rugrats and Doug and Ren and Stimpy and that kind of thing. And then when I was a little older, The Simpsons, loved The Simpsons, still do. And um, I think it definitely influenced my writing style a lot. Like, I love satire and I love the humor and the absurdism of the show. And um, you can probably see some of that in Clarence as well. Yeah. Um, and then beyond that, I, I think Mad Magazine is a big influence definitely. on me. Like, kind of loved how it almost felt like this like secret sort of like bad thing when you're a kid it's like making fun of adults and it's like very raunchy and strange and I liked how they kind of just stuck it to everyone and I used to love SNL as well for the same reasons like kind of just making fun of everybody and yeah. uh, Pee Wee's Playhouse huge yeah, fan definitely. of Pee Wee's yeah. Playhouse all the different animation styles and the comedy was great and yeah I mean now that you mentioned all of those shows like you can definitely see a lot of that in Clarence mm -hmm. so Again, another question related to your childhood. Since Clarence was a show about kids, yeah. uh, I, I wonder, uh, would you think that the show that you've helped, uh, you know, shape up, do you think y young, you, you know, like young 10-year-old Spencer would have loved and watched? Oh man, I mean, I would hope so. <laughs> I feel like I just loved anything animated for the most part. Um, there were certain shows that were more exciting to me than others, but yeah, I think I would have liked the humor of Clarence and like how it's so silly and crazy and over the top. And uh, yeah, I, th I think I would have. Yeah, like if you went back, like I did do well. Yeah. Me, younger me. Time travel, yeah. like that Bruce Willis movie. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's his younger self somehow. I yeah, yeah. They don't look at all like. <laughs> <laughs> so they just are like, uh, yeah, you know what? That's too hard to explain. Let's just not go, not go into that. It's like, perfect. Great cop out. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so um, now I'm going to ask, you know, the typical question that everybody always asks, which is, what was your favorite episode to work on? I think I really love this episode called Puddle Eyes. Mm -hmm. um, it was one of the earlier episodes that I wrote on the show, and something about how simple the premise was. It's like very straightforward. It's he Clarence falls asleep in a mud puddle and it crusts over his eyes, and then he goes the rest of the day with mud on his eyes. It's like something so absurd and stupid and and just that we were able to build a whole story from that and I don't know it was the f one of the first times on the show where I was like oh like we can get away with doing these crazy ideas and it just was really funny and fun and I loved how it was storyboarded and how it came out yeah yeah um, one episode I really loved about Clarence uh, I'm sorry I forget the name mm -hmm. but it's the one that's all like an homage to old timey animation, like Fleischer oh, Studios. Oh yeah, um, um, gold, you, Goldfish Follies. Yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Do, would you like to talk a little bit about that and like sure, yeah. why history of animation is important in that respect? Like, yeah, I mean, I'm a huge animation fan, and I went to school for animation, and I just love cartoons, and I love old cartoons, and so this episode, I really wanted to do kind of like a. Fleischer homage. A lot of people will say, oh, it's like Steamboat Willie, like Mickey Mouse, but no. to me it's more like Betty Boop <laughs> or like the old Popeye or the old Superman cartoons that they did. Um, I'm just so into those cartoons. I love them and I always have. And 
Yeah, we, we wanted to do an episode about Clarence carrying a goldfish around in his mouth and he couldn't find a container for it and he had to get it home. And it was a little bit too, like, imitatable and we're like, okay, well, what if we make it really cartoony? Mm -hmm. And then that kind of got us thinking about doing kind of a 1920s, 30s, 40s style cartoon yeah. to kind of get away with this weird storyline. And I love old, like you said, Fleischer yeah. cartoons. Um, I love the old Betty Boop and Popeye and the old Superman just some of the most beautiful animation and the most creative it's so crazy and everything is moving and everything can talk and it's really fun and vibrant and so yeah we just wanted to do kind of our tribute to that and it was really fun because typically Clarence episodes follow a more modern kind of storytelling so it was cool to get to just fill it with visual gags and just come up with as many references to those older cartoons that we love and just throw in every single thing we can think of you know it was it was very fun I really love how that one came out yeah yeah like I said that's like that's one of my favorite episodes it just it was just surreal and weird and so funny. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You know that I, I really really like that. I like I was like this episode is is gold. Uh, yeah. That's so um, I was wondering, um, that's Cla really Clarence is I I'm gonna say it's like a very forward show, as in uh, progressive mm -hmm. in a way. You know, you have. Jeff's mom, uh, Jeff's mom's, and uh, Clarence's mom is a, is a single mom, which I think is very important to to showcase and not like demonize. Like, yeah, you know what? There's there's kids who only have one official parent sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like, that's not bad. Like, that's real. So I was wondering, like, what do you think about the current uh, landscape of animation in terms of diversity and inclusiveness? Oh, um, Sorry, complete. <laughs> okay. Sorry, deep no, no, questions. No, no. no uh, animation is serious business. It's a good, good question. I, um, yeah, I mean, even from the start on the show, we always wanted that to be a theme that we were going to represent different types of families. Uh, so, you know, Jeff's family is different than Clarence's family or Sumo's family. He has a lot of siblings. They live in a trailer. Their friend Belson is very wealthy and lives in a big home. Clarence has a. Uh, Single mom with a boyfriend and just kind of a way to say to kids families look different they probably have friends who have those different types of families than theirs and that's okay and there's different types of family and it's that's all right um, in terms of the overall landscape I mean it's still a show that's mostly about three white boys um, I think that you know there's there's still some more to go for animation um, I think shows like Steven Universe have a lot of great representation um, in terms of gender and sexuality and that kind of thing um, trying to think of other examples. I, I, I think, yeah, there's still, in the media landscape overall, even outside of animation, there's still a long way for us to go, but I think it's cool that we're starting to see more heroes and big franchises like Star Wars show more diversity, and I hope to see the trend continue in animation because everyone deserves to see a version of themselves represented, and um, I think that it's so important, especially for kids, mm -hmm. to feel like there isn't a kind of standard of person and everyone's a person and everyone has a valid experience and yeah I hope to see more of it yeah, yeah. and something else that I, I remember you mentioning was um, that your that Clarence had a had a pretty well balanced storyboarding uh, department like in terms of uh, women and men working on it yeah, which yeah. I think is is really cool uh, for n not only for an animated show for a TV show to try to look for inclusive inclusiveness behind the scenes mm -hmm. so um I don't know if you want to talk about that. Like yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, I think in terms of the storyboard teams, it was a 50-50 split. And I think in eventually for the directors on the third season, at least, was half and half of men and women. Um, and it's a pretty diverse crew in other ways as well. Um, yeah, I mean, I think especially having people who are underrepresented in positions of power is really important too. I mean, not just uh, writers or board artists, but also directors as well. And um, I think it really helps to have 
those voices in the room. I mean, you're going to, for nothing else, even if you're not thinking about any of these other things, you're going to have different perspectives which create more interesting stories. You're, there's so many reasons why it's a good thing to be inclusive. So. Yeah. yeah. Sorry for asking the deep questions no, straight no, no, now. No, it's, it's more <laughs> yeah. interesting than like some of the more you know other questions I get asked sometimes. So. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I just think that when a show is being progressive, both in front of and behind of the cameras, I think it's important to recognize it. Like, you know what? You can't do this. You just need to try harder to hire the, the right people so that then you can represent them properly because representation matters. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I'm, I'm gonna ask you something like what is something that you would recommend for uh, like what's some piece of advice that you would have for people who are trying to pitch like maybe something you've gone through before that you say oh definitely do not go like super formal for your job interview at a <laughs> cartoon studio because you will look weird. I don't know like but something more you know, concrete. <laughs> do, do you mean pitching a TV show idea or to pitch a story while you're on a show? Or yeah. either one? I think either one would work for us, oh, okay. I believe. Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing that I can say is to try to be open-minded and animation is collaborative, your ideas are going to change and evolve and hopefully improve and get better. And I think when I first started writing I would be very I had too much ego about my writing and I was too attached to the story being one way and this is how I wrote it, this is how I want it to stay and I don't think that's a very productive attitude to have um, so maybe just being flexible and coming in with an open mind and and knowing that the people who are around you have a lot of insight and they can help improve what you're making and make it better and just to be good at listening to other people's ideas and to be a good collaborator. Yeah, I think that's really, really a good thing to know. <laughs> be collaborative and know that your ideas will evolve for the better if you take input or from other people. Yeah, just taking constructive yeah. criticism. Yeah, I'm gonna take that to heart as well. <laughs> So this was me, Julieta, and this was Spencer. <laughs> and, well, thanks for watching the video. Thanks up. Thank you. Thank you.